I'm Matt, and this is my garage. I'm waiting on parts to finish that. It's really hard to point with a camera in your hand. That sucker right there, right? That's a 79 uh, S2 motor and waiting on an alternator bracket. Need that to uh, get the timing tensioner all sorted out and uh, also waiting for a new alternator. I did get in a new air conditioning compressor. Super psyched about that because here in North Carolina, AC is not an option. Just not an option. Uh, especially in a car with the engine behind you. Makes it even, I don't know if it makes it worse or better. I don't know. But anyway, it gets hot in there. So got, got a new AC compressor on there. So uh, two things I'm waiting for. Alternator, I'm waiting for a high torque starter. Got one of those bad boys coming and waiting for that alternator bracket. And that's really all I need to finish that engine, mount it to the transmission, get it back in the car. So I can't really talk about that today. So today we're doing some miscellaneous stuff. Uh, we're doing the transmission on this one. Not gonna cover the same stuff I covered in the other video. This one, I got a bad, uh, bad sword clip and I have a bad clutch shaft and I had a bad crankshaft. So all that crap was a result of a sword clip breaking. Now I'm gonna show you what those parts look like when things go south. Uh, and let's see what else we're gonna do. Oh yeah, simple caliper rebuild. Rear caliper is gonna tear those apart, rebuild them. Uh, super easy, not much to that. And then we're gonna do an oil pump rebuild on this. And I, make it, I made it through the dismantling and um, kind of walking you through that and what the different parts are and how that thing works. I didn't get to the uh, rebuild portion. It is rebuilt. I just didn't have time in the video. So uh, I'll get another video out following this one on that, that caliper uh, or that oil pump rebuild. So uh, enough of that. Hey, let's look at what happens when a transmission goes really bad. So here we are, doing another transmission. I feel like I just finished the one on the 88. Um, so I, I'm not gonna go through the assembly of this thing. Um, I just wanted to point out a few things. If you wanna see assembly of replacing the sword clip and putting this whole thing back together again, then check out the uh, videos on the 88. But for right now, uh, you know, on the 88, I talked about the sword clip going back. And if that goes bad, how the clutch shaft will make its way toward the flywheel. And with the spring, that's, that's pushing the clutch shaft forward and just mill away at your, at your crankshaft. So um, that car hadn't done it, but guess what? This one did. So I get to show you what that looks like. Uh, all right, I have the old clutch shaft. And I have a new clutch shaft because the old one is garbage. And I want to show you the difference between the two. So this, this one again, the circuit failed and clutch shaft got pushed into the crankshaft and just milled away, milled away, milled away. There was actually nothing left of the spigot bearing and there was just a big hole in the back of the crankshaft um, where the spigot bearing was. And this thing had been like bouncing around in there. Uh, so check it out. So there are the ends, right? You can definitely see a difference in that cross section. One, this one is the, uh, the one that's bad. And it almost looks like it's got, it's not a round cross section anymore. It almost looks like it's uh, squared off on the ends. Very, very weird. So if I flip them this way, um, and I show you a close up, look at the end of the splines on, on this one here. See how it's worn away right there? Look at that, it's rounded off. That's from milling in the back of that crankshaft. Again, here's a good one. See the diff big, big, big difference. So this is trash. Now, one more thing I wanna uh, mention. Oh, let me show you this. So this is the, uh, the um, circlet off, off the old axle shaft, right? Right there. And I don't know if you can tell the difference. Here's the one, the new one. Now the new one is supposed to be thicker, uh, have a thicker cross section and I'm definitely seeing that. I don't know if you can. Also look at the old circlip, watch this. It just falls down. 
it just falls right down on the spline. This new one, not going to come off the spline. I had to really work to get it on there. So um, this had just lost all of its integrity. And it's just kind of like it's almost a, it like it opened up. Uh, so a lot of damage there, a lot of damage. The crankshaft was damaged too. And I don't have that here. That's at the machine shop. But the spigot bearing in the back was gone. And this milling action, I kind of got the same pattern on the back of the crankshaft. Now the crankshaft is salvageable, thank God. It, um, so, but a regular spigot bearing is not going to work for me anymore. Or clutch shaft bearing, whatever you want to call it. I think it's, it's the same thing. So a regular uh, clutch shaft bearing is not going to work for me anymore because the crankshafts, the hole is too large now. So this is uh, the upgraded. And I had never really, I hadn't installed one of these before and I would read about them, but I hadn't seen one. And what's cool is this is like um, a wheel bearing almost. And it's ball bearings in here, so it's not needle bearings. And it fits. So you can look at how wide the, um, Look how wide the diameter is. Now the regular uh, spigot bearing is probably the size of that inner inner race, about that size. So this is much bigger. So um, the crankshaft's off getting drilled out and I'm gonna have this one pressed in. So this will be my solution and allow me to save that, that crankshaft. The fit, now this is, this is um, not what I expected. So the fit of the bearing on the clutch shaft now is really tight. It's almost like it's a machine press. I'm a little concerned about that in mating the transmission to the motor um, because I can't, I won't be able to push the transmission in. I mean, this is a pretty tight fit. I guess that's the way it's supposed to be, but I imagine if I get it all square um, and I start those bolts on the belt housing and I slowly bring it together, that this should slide right in there. I'll put some lubricant in there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what it looks like, man, when the circle clip goes bad. <laughs> I, I didn't expect it on this. Well, you know, I shouldn't say I didn't expect it because with Lotus, I always expect what I don't expect. So um, actually, it was kind of cool for the first time to see, to see the damage firsthand and to be able to compare it to uh, a new shaft and what that looks like. I thought that was pretty cool. So, yeah, that's it. Not going to bore you guys with another transmission assembly, but um, right now, I'm going to get to putting this thing together. I know, I know. Jumping all around with these, uh, with these videos. I get it. But, you know, there's certain things I just want to, um, I want to take videos of and certain things I don't. So, the boring stuff is kind of boring. So, hey. This is a caliper and I thought this would be cool to film because this bad boy was seized. This is on the back of the car, 1979 Lotus Esprit. Um, E-brake mechanism right here. Kind of a bear to get that cable out. Um, but you can check this out. Let me see that. Rubber seals are gone and this whole cylinder in here, rusted baby. Rusted solid, this bad boy. Um, I gave it, gave it full PSI from my air compressor, 150 PSI, 160, I don't know, 160, something like that. And it just barely came out. I mean, I had to blast the hell out of it, but it didn't pop. Usually, usually they're like, bam, right? This one was like, you know, er, 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 and then it kind of stopped there and I was able to get it out. So, yeah, man, uh, hey, why not? Rebuilding everything else? The hell, let's rebuild the caliper too, right? Um, so once I got the piston out, e-brake cable came out, piston out, so now I'm gonna take this back housing out, off, and the reason I wanna do this is I wanna clean everything up. I wanna soak it. Um, I wanna clean out the inside of the the brake piston cylinder with some scotch Bright pads because it's nasty. I like these calipers better than the ones on the 88 inboard. They're both uh, Gerling, Gerling, 
I think it's Gerling. I don't know. Yeah, they're both made by the same company, but this one is a lot easier to strip down than the later model. It seems like a better design. I'm not really sure why they switched. <clears throat> Maybe you couldn't get these anymore. I don't know. Lotus's parts bin ran empty, so they went after the next best thing. Take this out, right? So there you've got the e-brake mechanism in this nice housing, and I don't have to monkey with that. Like on the other calipers, I had to take that apart. Um, there's the cylinder. Not much left of this um, protective seal here in the front. <laughs> As I take it out. <laughs> rust. Lots of rust. And there's an inner, there's an inner seal in there. I wonder what that looks like. See if I can pop that inner seal out. Yeah, so that came out, but covered with rust. Let's get some white on that. I don't know. Anyway, this thing's all rusted up and mucked up in there, so. But now, uh, you know, it's a stripped unit, pretty much. I can soak this, some carburetor cleaner, get as much crap out as I can, clean it up, uh, take some scotch bright pads to the inside because it's pretty rough in there. Uh, get it looking like new, and then put it back together again. Got a rebuild kit. It just comes with a couple seals. That's coming pretty soon. Same thing here. This, uh, I'm going to soak carburetor cleaner, get it cleaned up really good. And then um, wire wheel the outside with a brass wheel, brass wire wheel. Get it nice and clean. Uh, give it some paint. And then we'll be ready to put this thing back together again. Same with the piston. Take the brass wheel to the piston as well. Clean up the outside. Um, the, uh, the actual surface of the piston is good. It's not, it's not marred or scarred up at all. So I think I can reuse this. And... Uh, yeah, I don't see any rust in, in here, so that's good. It's only on the surface there and in here. So, salvageable. I'm going to clean these bad boys up and put them back together again. All right, putting the caliper back together again. So, I have my rebuild kit. It's really just um, this rubber skirt that... Um, rides on the uh, outside of the piston when it goes in and out it follows it the inner seal and then back here on the e-brake assembly i've already put it on there's another seal just like this one that sits right in there so uh, this is all one piece i didn't take this apart um, any farther than what you see here e-brake assembly works like that it works fine so the first thing i'm going to do is um, got a little bit of grease in a kit here going to put a little bit um, around this, this rubber o-ring not too much and this goes inside the caliper bore the piston bore um, there's two grooves in there one's for the outer seal one's for this this is the inner seal Try to work this in. So I got that one in there. Eh, the light's not good. It kind of sits down in there. Then after that, I'm going to go ahead and put the piston in. Pistons were looking good. All I did was clean them up a little bit. But the originals were, were fine. Just put a little bit of this assembly lubricant on it and I'm going to slide this bad boy into here really just kind of push it in once you get it going it slides in very easily and I'm going to re <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. 
<laughs> Perhaps not so far this time. Alright, so I could have just put that in from the back, I guess. Anyway, so I got it in there. Um, and now I just want to put this, the outside boot on. And uh, this just fits. There's a this part right here fits into the groove straightforward. I mean, these things are super easy, self-explanatory. It's almost not worth a video, but I took it apart, so I might as well put it back together again on camera, right? That's what fast forward's made for. All right, now I'm just lubing up the inside of the. The, the boot here so I can get the piston to come back through the last one I did I, I did fight a little bit to get it over to initially get it over that inner seal okay so I got it got it coming back through and now I'm just going to carefully Take this boot and uh, work it into those gro that groove on the piston. And that's it from the piston side. Remember when you put your pads in, these the grooves I gotta remember go uh, up and down. There's a little notch on the pad. Uh, last step is just putting the e-brake assembly back on. And this thing kind of wants to just put it in the right way. That would work a little better. This thing likes to kind of twist its way in. Got six new or three new stainless steel uh, bolts here. Can put those in. <clears throat> Tighten these babies down. So yeah, just like that. Um, cool, got a caliper. Looks good. It's clean. It's freaking happy on the inside. No more rust. All right. So last step is I want to put the return spring for the e-brake back on here this uh, lever here has a tendency to kind of float out so you just take it you push it back in and the only reason you do that is I I need some room um, right there right there on the end of that that pin so I got I have room for the uh, the spring to latch on to after that just kind of Spring's real easy to manipulate by hand. And there you go. E-brake's working good. And that is a finished caliper. So that's it. Now all I need to do really is there's a bracket here. It's an anti-rattle. Steel little shim for the brake pads. Put the pads in. Put it on the rotor. So there you go. Probably took more time to take it apart and to clean it. Actually, probably cleaning up the parts, worst part of the job, right? Disassembly and reassembly, piece of cake. Cleaning parts, never fun. All right, let's go find something else to do. I'm going to take off the auxiliary housing, 10 millimeter bolts. Man, these things are wicked loose. Like they're, uh, they're only finger tight, wow. That's not right. Might have had an oil leak coming through there. All right, what we're going to see in here are the oil pump drives, and there's a small gasket. Ease this off. Okay. All right, here's a little gasket. It's a very, very thin gasket. It's important to replace this with a new one. Don't try to use any type of forma gasket on here because the thickness of this sucker is what is going to ensure you have proper oil pressure in your motor. So that's very important. There's two dowels that that basically this fits into, one here 
and one here to align it properly. Um, all right, in here, uh, this is the oil pump drive. It's two part. I'm going to take this out. It should slide right out. I've got. Ooh, wow! Ho oh, ho! It's broken! Wow! Wow, I've never, I, I've taken apart at least 15 of these things. I've never seen a broken drive. What the heck? Okay, well, that's going in the garbage. All right, here's the other side. You got a spring in there that comes right out. Okay, from here, it gets a little more complicated. So, remember, as, as this is the, the oil pump drive on the front of the, front of the motor, right? So as this thing's turning, your cam belt's turning that, this turns, <laughs> and this should have been on top of it, but that's what creates oil pressure. That's going to pull the oil uh, out of the pan and then distribute it, and it pushes it out through the rest of the motor. It's really an ingenious design, the way it works. All right, but to get this assembly out, there's a, there's a C-clip on here, I'm going to pull the pulley off, and then there's another clip on there, and uh, so I think I'll go ahead and try to get this pulley off now. All right, so because this thing is free to turn, I'm never going to get this off with a ratchet. It would be really, really difficult, so I'm going to try to hit it with a gun and see if the torque from the gun can spin it off. I'm hoping. It's an, it's an Allen head screw on the front. It's uh, this one, six millimeter. I have seen them with a bolt there, so I... I don't know, I guess it just depends on your motor. Let me see what happens. Fingers crossed, I hope this works. Yes! Alright, here we go. Uh, bolt washer out of the front. Pulley should come off. Alright. Alright, now there's a little, little clip right there. Right in there. And there's another one uh, right there. So now I gotta tackle those. All right, <laughs> there's the woodruff gate. Came out easily. Sometimes they can be a pain. You know, you think it's something's gonna be hard and it's not, and then the things that should be easy sometimes are a pain in the butt. Well, that came off and shot across my garage. Find that later. All right, got another one on this side. All right, that was the second one. All right, you can see now, this is moving, right? And I'm just gonna pull it out the front, rotating as I go. All right, got that off. All right, there's the shaft. So I got this off, and the reason I, I went through the trouble to take this off is because I believe these come in pairs. So I wanna make sure that uh, I'm, I'm getting rid of the old one and I'm, I'm getting a new set and put it, putting it on there. The only thing left to do, and this is one of the reasons I go after it. This is the oil seal. I'm going to pull that. There we go. Just a little leverage is all I needed. So that's the oil seal. Uh, that goes in the front of this thing. Um, right in there. So, you know, I can tell somebody's been in here before. Because there's some markings on these surfaces. It's clear indication whoever was working on it didn't really wasn't too careful um, so anyway all right parts are broken down 
that's all we can do at this point. So I'm going to clean everything up, gather the new parts, and basically the only thing that's going in new is going to be uh, the gasket, right? The oil seal, and <laughs> of course my my oil pump mechanism. And I oh. Well, it doesn't really count. So the distributor goes in here and you put a new O-ring uh, on the distributor and that's going to uh, keep the oil from coming out of here. So, that you know, that's new too, but eh, it doesn't count. We're doing the oil pump, right? And I think that's it. So let me clean all this up, get the new parts on the table, and I'll show you how to put it back together again. So yeah, there you go. The uh, transmission gave me some trouble, man, on this car. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was bad, bad, bad. And uh, those caliper rebuilds, super easy, right? Didn't take a lot of time at all. And the rebuild kit, there's nothing to that either. So uh, super easy to get that done. And then finally, that oil pump teardown, a little more involved. Um, I did off screen, you know, I put a note in there saying I did use the press to get that rotor uh, off the, the oil pump shaft. There's, you know, you could try to use a puller. It's not ideal. It's really hard to grab that sucker because there's nothing to grab onto, but a press, it works like a champ, man. It comes right off. And um, when I put the new one on, same deal, press. But uh, everything else is just standard tools. And yeah, super easy. Not much again in the rebuild kit. Cost you peanuts, cost you nothing. It's just time. It's just time and, and effort to, to do the job. But uh, certainly worth doing. So that's it. I'll do another video soon. Later. Okay.